How to install Jenkins on Rocky Linux 9. Here's where we're starting today. I have a fresh installation of Rocky Linux 9. Down in the description of this video is a link to a gist that has all of the commands that I'm going to be running in this video. Now, before I started, I've already run one command on this Rocky Linux 9 machine, and that was dnf-y update to update all of the core packages on the machine. You'll also notice that I'm logged in as root. So since we're going to be running Jenkins on this machine, the first thing that we need to install is a JVM. Now I've chosen to install the Timrin distribution of Java, and I have two choices. I can either run Java 11 or Java 17. In my case, I'm just going to run Java 11. So the commands that I run are going to be a little bit different than the commands that you see on the screen right now. The first thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and install the repository out to Adoptium. So we'll copy this. Let's go ahead and go back over into our machine. We'll paste this in and hit Enter. And let's take a look at the output of this command that we just ran. So if we take a look at Adoptium repo, we can see that we're going to be running against the Rocky release from Adoptium.net. The reason why we have Rocky here is that we were extracting the distribution name from Etsy OS release. So let's go back over to the instructions from Adoptium. And since we can run DNF, I'm going to say DNF install Timrin 17 JDK, but instead of 17, I'm going to run 11. So let's paste this in. I'm going to change the 17 to 11, and I'm also going to go ahead and put in a dash Y, just that way I'm not asked to say yes as we go through the installation. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And what you're going to see here is that this fails. And the reason why is we're getting a 404 for Rocky 9. At the time of recording, there isn't a 9 from Adoptium. So we're going to need to modify our repository file to pull from Rocky 8. So let's go ahead and modify our Etsy yum repos Adoptium. So let's go ahead and replace the release ver that's in the base URL. And instead of it being a variable, let's go ahead and just make it eight. So we'll delete that and insert eight. We'll save that and then let's go ahead and run our DNF install one more time. Okay, now that the installation is finished, let's type java-version and we can see that we're running version 11.0.17. Next up, we're ready to go ahead and install Jenkins. So we'll go over to Jenkins.io, click on the download button in the upper right-hand corner. We can choose between stable or weekly. I'm going to choose stable. So we'll go ahead and scroll down underneath the stable column and click on CentOS Fedora Red Hat. Now there are two commands that we need to run, actually three. We need to first install the Jenkins repository, then install the key, and then we're going to install Jenkins. Now we can ignore this installation for font config in Java 11 because we've already installed Java on our machine. So let's go ahead and copy our wget line and let's paste it into our console. Next, let's go ahead and grab our key and import the key. And then finally, we're ready to do the installation for Jenkins. So let's go back over to our console here. I could use yum, but instead I'm going to use DNF because I have it available to me. Next, I'm going to type dash y so it doesn't ask me any questions. And then I'm going to say install Jenkins and hit enter. And now our Jenkins package installation is completed. Let's go ahead and see what the status of this Jenkins process is. So we'll say system CTL dash dash full status Jenkins. And what we'll notice here is that the Jenkins service, although loaded, is currently inactive. So there's just three lines here, Jenkins service, loaded, and inactive. Now this is actually good because I want to make some changes to the startup parameters for this Jenkins controller. So let's go ahead and type Q to quit out of this. We'll type clear, and let's go ahead and make the modifications to our startup parameters. So we'll say systemctl edit Jenkins. And what you can see here is we see that we're editing the override conf file for this service. Now, if you watched other videos, sometimes you might see a blank screen, but in this case for Rocky Linux 9, I can see all the different variables that I could edit here. This is similar to what you would see if you ran systemctl dash dash full edit Jenkins, and you would see all these variables. Now there's two variables that I'm going to make changes to. One of them is Jenkins ops, which by default is empty. And then the other one that I'm going to be making changes to is Java ops, which right now the default is just headless equals true. So let's go back up top 
So we'll go back to one. And I can go ahead and edit between anything between here and the comment below. So this is the section where I can add my changes. So let's go ahead and go into insert mode and paste in the variables that I want to set. Now in my case, both of these variables live under the service section. The first one I'm doing is Java Ops. Remember the default is headless true, so I'm going to keep that one in my configuration. And then I'm adding in four new attributes, one for prefer IPv4 stack, one for tempter, and then two that are related to my time zone. Now I could use the default for java.io.tempter, which for this machine specifically is slash temp. But when I run Jenkins, I like to specify my own temp directory so I can keep it isolated from anything else that's running on the machine. Now, the downside of that is I need to go in and manually create this directory and set permissions on it, which we'll do in just a moment. The second variable that we're setting is Jenkins ops, and I'm specifying the plugin root. Now, if you've never worked with plugin root before, what that means by specifying it is anytime the Jenkins controller starts up, instead of expanding the plugins inside of the Jenkins home plugins directory, it's now going to expand or unzip, if you will, those plugin files into the location that I've specified for plugin root. And in this case, I'm specifying Varcast Jenkins plugins. Now, unlike the tempter, since Jenkins is aware of this variable, it will go ahead and automatically create that directory for me. So I don't have to go ahead and pre-create that directory. So let's go ahead and save this file. So the next thing that we need to do is go ahead and create our temp directory that we were just talking about. So we'll say make dir p var cache Jenkins temp. I need to go ahead and change the ownership because var cache Jenkins is owned by the Jenkins user, but currently I am root. So the temp directory was just created as root. So we'll say change owner dash r Jenkins Jenkins var cache Jenkins, just to go ahead and reown that whole var cache Jenkins directory tree. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our status one more time before we start it. So we'll type clear system CTL dash dash full status Jenkins. Now the first time that we ran status, we had three lines. We had service, we had loaded, and we had inactive. But notice what we have now with drop in. Drop in now specifies our override comp file. So let's go ahead and type Q. And then one more thing, if we wanted to see all the different variables that are available to systemd, we can type system CTL show Jenkins. And here you'll see all the variables that are available for usage to systemd. If we scroll down a little bit more, what we're going to see is under the environment line, we see our Jenkins home, our Jenkins web root. If we go ahead and scroll to the right, we'll see our Java ops, and we'll also see our Jenkins ops. So let's go ahead and quit out of this. And I want to run one more command. We're going to run systemd, analyze, verify, and then Jenkins service. And since there were no messages coming back from systemd analyze, this tells me that systemd understands all the variables that are set, and it's ready to go ahead and start. So let's go ahead and start Jenkins. So we'll say system CTL start Jenkins. And now that that has completed, let's go ahead and check our status one more time. So we'll say system CTL dash dash full status Jenkins. Now, unlike the previous times where we had three or four lines, what we now see is we have active running and we see underneath this 12,809 process ID, we can see the whole line that was used to start the process. So we can see it's user bin Java, there's headless true, there's the prefer IPv4 stack, tempter, there's our time zone variables. We see dash jar starting up the war, web root, HTTP port, and then the plugin root that we specified in Jenkins ops. Now, if we scroll back to the left, we'll also see the last little bit of the log. Well, if we wanted to take a look at the full log, I'm gonna type Q to get out of this. We'll type clear, and then let's take a look at journal CTL dash U Jenkins. If I type that in, that will drop me in at the top of my log file for Jenkins. And if I scroll through, I will see the initial password that we can use to go ahead and start up and set up our Jenkins controller. So we'll copy this. So let's go ahead and go over to our browser and type in Jenkins 8080. We can go ahead and paste in our administrator password that we just pulled from the log, click on continue, click on install suggested plugins, and let's go ahead and create our first admin user. So we'll say admin, 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 admin one more time, and a great email address at a at a.com. Click on save and continue. Then let's go ahead and click on save and finish. 
And then finally, click on Start Using Jenkins. And now we're ready to go ahead and start defining jobs and start using our Jenkins controller. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.